Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time of the day it is that you're watching your video, I hope you're having a good one. Today our video is over solving equations with variables on both sides of the equation. And these are your notes. And we've done a lot of equations um, where we've only had a variable. Again, a variable is a letter that represents a number that we don't know. Uh, we're usually the, we only have one variable on one side and we don't have one on the other side. Well, if you notice on these problems, we have variables on both sides of the equation and we're going to show you how to solve those. Uh, but first, I'm going to model or show with uh, symbols uh, this situation and how you're really doing it when you solve these. So we're going to remember the equation again. It's 5x plus 3 for the example 1 here equals 2x minus 6. So then we're going to come over here and we're going to see that on this side we have 5x plus 3. Again, those really fantastic looking x's. Those are five of them, so that's 5x. Then we got 3, 1, so that's plus 3. And then my really high-tech equal sign there. And then over here we have 2x and the red negative ones, there's six of them, so that represents negative six. We've got 2x minus six on this side, okay? And again, the main idea when we solve these is that we want to uh, isolate the variable. So we want to get the variable on one side and the numbers that are all by themselves on the other sides. So first we're going to work with, well, we can start with everyone, whichever one we want to, and we're going to do this all at once. So let's say we want to get rid of the, if we look, we got 5x over here and 2x over here. So I could probably real easily get this, these 2x's over to this side. But again, these are positive 2x's, uh, so that means to get rid of them, I have to put two negatives here. And again, the main rule that you want to remember here is anything you do to one side of the equation, you have to do the exact same thing to the other side. So if I have two negative x's over here, I got to put two negative x's over here. Okay, what happens over here is these cancel out, so they're gone. And the two that I took over here take away two of these. Okay, so now those two are gone, leaving me three x on this side and no x's over here. Okay, but now I've still got this imbalanced. I want to get these ones over to this side. So to get rid of these three ones, since they're positive ones, I'm going to subtract three from this side, and that's going to cancel out those three. And then on the other side, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to move up three negatives over here. Okay. Over here, these three negatives are going to cancel out these three positives. But then over here, nothing's going to cancel out. All I have is negative 9. So if we look, I've got 3x equals negative 9, and then my last step is to give as many of these to each one of these x's so that they're all equal. So if we look, I've got 1, 2, 3, and I can give each one of these 3 negative 1's, making negative 3. Okay, so that means x is equal to negative 3, and that would be my answer for that one. Okay. Now on paper, it would look like this. So really, the only thing I really did here is I went, okay, I got my 5x plus 3, my 2x minus 6. To get rid of this positive 2x, I subtracted 2x from this side, did the same exact thing to the other side. That cancels out that. And now that I've gotten rid of this, I don't want to also get rid of that over here. I've got this, which is going to be 3x, but I want to get rid of that positive 3, so remember I subtracted 3 from both sides. Exact same thing. Notice how those look exactly the same? That cancels out that one. Over here I've got negative 9, my equal sign, and then of course the last thing I did was I separated each x. Really what I did was I just divided by that number in front of the variable, the 3, and that gave me an answer of negative 3. Now, another thing I always want to make sure that I do is that I check my answer. That means I take my answer and I put it back into the equation to see if 
it ex it is actually is equal at the end because if I did it wrong, then that's how I can catch it. So I put negative 3 here, so I do 5 times negative 3, which is negative 15, plus 3. Over here, 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6, and then minus 6, okay? And if I do negative 15 plus 3, again, think something like you owe somebody 15, you give them 3, you still owe them 12, so we're going to write that up here. And then over here, negative 6 minus 6 more also gives me negative 12. So since both of those answers are exactly the same, I know that I did that question correctly. Okay? All right, let's come down here. I'm not going to do the model for this one, uh, but we're just going to solve these out. Now, again, we got variables on both sides of the equation, and we, we want to get the variables on one side and the numbers on the other. So it probably makes sense to get rid of this negative 2x by doing the opposite and adding 2x, because that's going to make that go away. Right here, doing the same exact thing. Notice that my x's are underneath each other. So that cancels out that one and gives me 5x over here. Hey, over here I got a number by itself, and over here I still have 5x minus 7. So I want to, want to get rid of that minus 7. And to do that, I do the opposite, which is add 7, cancels that out. Same thing over here, 3 plus 7 gives me 10. And then just dividing by 5, and I'm not going to write that whole thing down, you can probably do this pretty easily in your head, gives me an answer of x equals 2. Okay. So again, I do want to check my work to make sure I did this right. So 3 times 2 is 6, and 6, I'm going to write this over here, 6 minus 7 equals negative 1 for this side. And then over here, negative 2 times this 2, again, I'm putting the 2 there, is negative 4, and negative 4 plus 3 is also negative 1. So since I got the same answer on both sides, I know that I did that problem correctly. Okay? Now, we're going to do this with decimals. And I don't want you to think that because we're going to use decimals now that this is some different rules are going to apply. The rules are exactly the same. I still want to do the exact same thing that I did before, even though I have decimals. So... Uh, I've got 3.25n and 1.5n, and I need to combine them, but I want to get rid of one side, and it probably makes more sense to get rid of this 1.5n. So I'm going to subtract 1.5n there, making sure to line up my decimals, and in this case, I'd probably add a zero. Okay, that's going to cancel out this side. And over here, when I do this math, I'm going to get 1.75n. Okay. And again, I got rid of this number here. I don't want to also get rid of that one because then I wouldn't have anything on the right side. So I look over here and I say, well, I just want to get rid of this minus 2. So I add 2 here and I add 2 here. Again, making sure I line up decimals to get that right. This cancels out. And then 6.75 plus 2 is 8.75. Now again, you're left with some decimal work here. But you have your calculator, and hopefully you're going to just take that out. And if you know the rules, then this really isn't that difficult, especially with a calculator. You're going to divide both sides by that whole thing in front of the variable. So 1.75, 1.75, that's going to cancel that out or make it 1, which just leaves me the end that I'm trying to solve. And when I put this in the calculator and solve it, I'm going to get an answer of exactly 5. Okay, now I'm not going to test that one, even though I probably should. It's going to take too much time. Just trust me, it's right. Okay? All right, now we're going to come down here, and we're going to do some with some rational numbers or fractions in them. And if we look up here in the definitions, which I put, this is something you're going to use for this. Least common multiple. Okay? So when I come down here, um, it would be really difficult to try to do this any other way than the way we're going to do it. So my numbers I'm looking at first are these numbers on the bottom, okay? My denominators. And what I want to do is I want to find the lowest number or the least number that they have in common. So I'm going to start with the biggest number, and I'm going to ask myself, does 4 go into 5? No, it doesn't, and definitely 2 doesn't. So I'm going to make this one bigger. I'm just going to double the 5 and say 10. Well, does 4 go into 10 evenly? No, it doesn't do that either. So then I'm probably going to go to all the way to 20, and when I think about 20, I know that 5 goes into 20, 4 goes into 20, and 2 goes into 20. So what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to multiply this whole thing because, again, the rule is multiply. If you do want something to one side, you have to do the exact same thing to the other. I'm going to multiply both sides and just multiply the whole thing by 20. Now, that may sound a little difficult, but really it's not. All you're going to do is multiply this top number times 20. Okay, so we're going to have 20 times 3 is 60, and it's still going to be over 5. Okay, and you'll see why this will work in a minute. I have to do this number times the 22, so 4 times 20 is 80. Over here, again, the 20 times just the 3 is 60 over 4. And then again, I have to do this also, so 20 times the 1 is 20 divided by 2. Now, I'm going to simplify all these fractions that I have because they're improper. And the reason that I did all this is because they're all going to work out to be whole numbers. It's going to make the problem a lot easier. So, 60 divided by 12, I'm sorry, by 5 is 12. So that's 12m. That 80 just comes straight down. The 60 divided by 4 is 15m. And then the 20 divided by 2 is 10. Well, now that I got this far, now I can just solve these out like we did before. So I've got 12m and 15m, and if I think, the best thing to probably do is, I mean, I could subtract 15 from both sides, but it's probably easier to get rid of this 12m. Now, I do have to remember that this, even though it doesn't have a sign here, is positive. So to get rid of it, I have to subtract 12m here, subtract 12m here. That cancels that out. Over here, it gives me 3m, okay? I don't want to also get rid of that, so I come over here and I say, all right, I want to get rid of this minus 10. So I add 10 to this side, add 10 to this side, which gives me an answer of 90. And then all I got to do is divide the 90 by the 3, and that gives me a final answer of 30. Ugh, kind of crossed out the 30 there, but that's how you're going to do those, okay? We'll get lots of practice with these, so don't freak out the first time you see it. All right, turn your paper over. you got one more to do, and we're going to do that one together. Again, whenever I see this, I have to find a common multiple, least common multiple. And in this case, since there's only two of them, I could probably just say, all right, 3 times 5 is 15, so I want to multiply this whole thing by 15, which, again, means for the fractions, I'm just going to do the top number times 15. So 15 times 1 gives me 15 over 3y minus... I got to do 15 times 4, which is 60. Okay, over here I've got a negative 2 fifths. I'm going to do the 15 times 2, which is 30, over 5y. And then 15 times the 2 here gives me 30. I'm going to simplify those improper fractions here. 15 divided by 3 is 5, so that's negative 5y. That doesn't change. The negative 30 divided by 5 is negative 6 y, and then the plus 30 just stays the way it is. Now, when I got two negatives here, this is there's not really a great way to do this. Um, I got to do the same thing to both sides too, uh, although, so I'm probably just going to add the 5 y to both sides, and this is where we got to be really careful with our adding and subtracting, negatives and positive. That's going to cancel that one out, and negative 6 plus 5 is not negative 11, so be careful. If you owed somebody $6 and you paid them 5 you still would owe them 1 okay? So that becomes negative 1y. Uh, I want to get rid of this 30 now because I don't want to get rid of both numbers on this side. So I'm going to subtract 30 here, subtract 30 here. That's going to give me negative 90. Again, think something like if you spent 60 and spent 30, you would have spent a total of 90. Okay, so that gives you that. And then when I get to this it's really not that difficult. If they're both negative, I can simply just make them both positive because that is technically doing the same thing to both sides. So my final answer is y equals 90. Okay? Very last question. This is one where you have to actually write uh, a equation. And this one's going to have variables on both sides. And it's going to represent a real-world situation. So here's our real-world situation. It says, Mike can join the video club at Rent House Videos for $20.00 and then only pay $1.75 per video, or you can join the video club at Tom's Movies for $10 and then pay $2 per video. How many videos would Mike have to rent at each video store for the cost to be exactly the same? 
So I'm going to write this out. It's again on this side. It said it was twenty dollars plus a dollar seventy-five per video. So I'm going to use V for video because that number is going to change. This is not going to change. He's only going to pay that twenty dollars once. Okay. And then on the other place, it was ten dollars, but then it was two dollars a video. Okay. So at some point, these two amounts are going to be exactly the same. So all we're going to do to, to solve this is just the same thing we've been doing, is just get the variables to one side. Well, I really don't want to subtract 2 from 1.75, so I'm going to get rid of this 1.75v by subtracting it from both sides. Okay, and that's 2.00, so that's going to cancel out. That's going to leave me 0.25v. Okay, when I do that math there, because again, this was subtraction, even though I forgot to write it. Okay, on this side, I want to get rid of the 10. Okay, so to get rid of that positive 10, I'm going to subtract 10 from here. Subtract 10 from here. It's going to make that side go away. Over here, it's going to leave me an answer of 10. And even though this looks a little weird and... Again, it might be hard to kind of think of in your head like you might want to do. The basic rule that we want to follow is to get rid of this 0.25 in this multiplying problem is to divide. So I'm going to get rid of this 0.25 by dividing both sides by 0.25, which would, if I put that in my calculator, would give me an answer of 40. So what that tells me is, is that when I rent 40 videos from each place, the cost is going to be exactly the same. Okay, and this is probably the easiest one to put it into. So if I did $2 per video and did 40 videos, that's $80 plus the 10 means it's going to, at $90, it's going to cost the same at both stores. Okay, so write it down here. So it says if Mike rented 40 videos at each store, then his total cost at each store would be $90. Therefore, if he knew he was going to rent more than 40 videos, it would be smarter for him to rent videos at, well, which place? Well, the place that's just a little bit cheaper, even though it's only a quarter per video, he's going to save a quarter every time by renting from Rent House Videos. We're going to shorten that, Rent House Videos, where the videos are only $1.75 each after the $20, okay? Okay, well, there's your video, a little bit under 18 minutes, and... We're going to do lots of practice on this, and once again, you will be experts at it. Okay, have a great day. We'll see you soon.